back from the dead. Should scientists bring extinct species back to life? Until the 1980s, Australia was home to a very odd amphibian, the gastric brooding frog. The strange thing about this frog was that the female laid her eggs in water, and once the male fertilized them, she swallowed the eggs whole. Her tadpoles grew inside her stomach. When the baby frogs were fully developed, the mother burped them out of her mouth. This strange species fascinated scientists, but soon after researchers discovered gastric brooding frogs in the early 1980s, a fungal infection wiped all of them out. The species became extinct. Now, three decades later, the gastric brooding frog may come back to life. Scientists are trying to use biotechnology the artificial manipulation of living things to resurrect the baby burping frog, as well as species that have been become, or sorry, have been extinct for much longer. Just imagine looking at a saber-toothed cat or a woolly mammoth or a giant ground sloth, things our ancestors saw, says Hank Greenley, a bioethicist at Stanford University in California. That's plausible now. Reviving a species. Why bring back extinct species? One reason is to increase biodiversity, which has declined in many areas as species die off. When an ecosystem has a wide variety of animals and plants, there's a better chance that at least some of them will survive. Will survive natural disasters, disease outbreaks, or climate change. All of these de-extinction projects are focused on trying to increase complexity and diversity of the natural world says Mike Archer, a paleontologist at the University of New South Wales in Australia. Archer is leading the team that's trying to bring back the gastric brooding frog. When Archer set out to revive the frog five years ago, the first thing he needed was an intact nucleus from one of its cells. Nuclei contain an organism's DNA. This chemical carries the hereditary information that determines an animal's traits. Scientists have been using nuclei from living animals to create clones or genetically identical copies of those animals for many years. But when an animal dies, its cells decompose and the DNA inside the nuclei begins to break down. This caption here says, under a microscope, a researcher injects an egg with genetic material to create a clone. This chart down here at the bottom says, how to make a woolly mammoth. Scientists may be able to use a frozen cell from a mammoth that's been dead for thousands of years to bring the species back from extinction. An elephant, the mammoth's closest living relative, would carry the baby clone. First, they would need to isolate the nucleus of a viable mammoth cell from a frozen carcass. Two, they would need to remove the nucleus from the egg of an elephant and replace it with the mammoth nucleus. Then, chemically or electrically, stimulate the cell to make it begin dividing. Fourth, place the egg in the uterus of an elephant. It will take almost two years to develop. Five, if the pregnancy is successful, the elephant gives birth to a baby mammoth.
Back to the article. This makes cloning an extinct species much harder than cloning a living one. Luckily, back in the 1970s, another scientist had frozen some gastric brooding frog tissue and saved it. Archer examined cells from the frozen sample and was excited to find that their nuclei appeared intact. The next step was to find an egg. In traditional cloning, scientists take an egg from a female of the same species and remove its nucleus. Then, they replace it with the nucleus of a regular cell from the body of the individual they want to clone. When the egg starts to divide, the new cells contain copies of the donor animal's DNA. But no one had saved any gastric brooding frog eggs. That meant that Archer had to try something else. Inserting the cell nucleus of the extinct frog into the egg of another species. He started collecting eggs laid by great barred frogs, a common species in Australia. Over the next few years, Archer's team injected thousands of great barred frog eggs with gastric brooding frog nuclei. None of them grew. But the researchers kept trying and adjusting their technique. Finally, about two years ago, one of the eggs started dividing. When Archer tested the growing ball of cells, or embryo, he found gastric brooding frog DNA inside. That told us that the extinct animal's DNA was driving the development of a new frog, he says. De-extinction plans. So far, none of the eggs have grown past the embryo stage into baby frogs. Archer and his colleagues aren't sure why. But if they can solve that problem, says Archer, I'm hopeful that within a few years, we, we should have this frog back. Archer's attempt is the farthest along, but other teams of scientists want to use similar techniques to bring back other extinct species like the woolly mammoth. These hairy relatives of elephants roamed the frozen tundra of Siberia until they died out about 5,000 years ago. Scientists have found many buried mammoth fossils, and in a few cases, the frigid conditions have helped preserve some DNA. A group of southern Co Korean and Russian researchers hopes to use this material to bring mammoths back to life one day. Ben Novak Ben Novak, a biologist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, wants to use genetic techniques to bring back the extinct passenger pigeon. These sleek gray blue birds used to flock all over the northeastern United States in groups of a billion or more. But by the late 1800s, they had been hunted to extinction by trappers who sold them for people to eat. Bringing them back would help restore biodiversity to the forest ecosystems in which they lived, says Novak. Ethical Concerns Technology may have made it possible to bring back extinct species, but does that mean it's a good idea? Hank Greenlee, the Stanford bioethicist, studies the ethical implications of technologies like cloning. He thinks de-extinction may has, or sorry, he thinks de-extinction has many potential benefits, including helping ecosystems recover. But Greenlee says, scientists working on these projects should be very careful. Many of the environments that extinct species once inhabited have changed since they lived there, he says. If a long gone species is reintroduced, it could become an invasive species that upsets the current ecosystem. Some conservationists also worry 
that if scientists can bring back extinct animals, no one will care about keeping endangered species from becoming extinct in the first place. If this were to undercut efforts to conserve currently existing species, that would be a tragedy, says Greenlee. Archer doesn't think that will happen. In fact, he says the cloning techniques scientists developed to bring back extinct species could be used to breed endangered animals too. Many of the species animal or scientists want to bring back became extinct because people hunted them or ruined their habitats, argues Archer. Humans even helped spread the fungus that killed off the gastric brooding frogs. They shouldn't be gone, and we did it, says Archer. I think we have a moral responsibility to try to fix what we broke. The captions down here at the bottom says, In 2001, researchers cloned the first domestic cat. The, the kitten is named Cece, for copycat. Some companies began offering to clone pets, but it's very expensive. 2003, cells from a dead banting, a type of wild Asian cattle, produced a healthy cloned calf, raising hope that cloning can help save endangered species. Scientists report in 2009 that they used frozen cells to clone the bucado, an extinct Spanish goat, but the clone, born with lung defects, lived in, for only seven minutes.